neglect. I'm here to give a study this morning, and the study will, will be Awake Now from Thy Sleep and Slumber. And we're going to start our study this morning in Genesis chapter 15, starting with verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And when the sun was going down, this prophetically will be when the Holy Spirit will be withdrawn. Uh, when the four winds are released, God's Holy Spirit will be withdrawn from this earth. It will only be in the, those that have taken of the marriage. Uh, that will bring um, about the spiritual darkness. And a deep sleep, um, as in a trance, um, a, meaning a half-conscious state between sleeping and waking, in which ability to function voluntarily may be suspended, a dazed or bewildered uh, condition, an unconscious hypnotic condition, um, also um, the passage from life to death um, as to go across uh, Passover to the other side. Um, this deep sleep fell upon Abram. Abram meaning exalted father. Uh, Abram being the first to be <clears throat> approached by the pre-incarnate word of God. The first to be called he uh, a Hebrew. Those that cross over, uh, pass over to the other side of uh, a region. He was also the first to engage in international commerce, the first to pay property tax, 10% uh, to Melchizedek. Um, the circumcision was inst instituted as a sign of the great covenant and um, instituted to Abraham. And, and um, lo, a hora, a uh, uh, hora as an idol. Uh, also means a bugbear. A bugbear means an imaginary uh, being invoked to frighten children as um, um, a goblin um, um, to uh, swallow up disobedient children. Uh, also means to dread uh, terror um, of great darkness, great as an older, as an in insolent, as in showing uh, rude behavior, uh, er uh, arrogancy, lack of respect, uh, insulting in speech or conduct, noble, proud thing. Uh, also a great man, a matter, a thing um, mighty. Um, great darkness fell upon him, darkness as in misery. Um, also means to be cast down, overthrown, divide. And then um, verse 13, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And I shall go to thy fathers in peace, and I shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation uh, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Uh, the fourth generation, and I'm going to go uh, over to Exodus. Hold your place. I'm just going to go over to Exodus and read um, Exodus 34 and read um, from 5 to 17. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and, he, and worshipped. And he said, If now if I found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and make us for thy inheritance. And he said, Behold, I made a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels such as not been done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thy art shall see the work of the Lord for it is a terrible thing and I will do um, what I what I will do with thee observe thou that which I command thee this day behold I will drive out before thee the Amorite 
and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest. Let it be for a snare in the midst of thee, but you shall de destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring with their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou shalt take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. And thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Uh, the fourth generation, uh, 400 years, uh, is Yahweh will judge that nation and idolatrous gods. Uh, the sins would um, cum cumulate uh, in the fourth ge generation. Uh, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. The iniquity um, unrepented of is accumulative and, and increasing until the fourth generation. Four hundred years, which, to, um, which time divine judgment is forthcoming. Israel was formed in the fourth generation. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes of Israel. Um, America, a nation that was founded on God's principles and God we trust, is now nearing its fourth generation. Uh, well, it's in its fourth generation. Um, the year 2020 was the 400th year from the Pilgrims landing in Plymouth for the sake of religious liberty. In 1620, a group of dedicated people who profoundly influenced the foundations of what we call the United States of America. And now we're going to go back to... Um, Genesis uh, 15 verse 16 and the but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full Amorites meaning talkers promise or command and it came to pass that when the Sun went down and it was dark behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces a smir uh, for behold the day cometh that thou shalt burn as an oven and all the proud yea and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them up says the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch uh, and a burning as in a fiery lamp as to shine burning fire um, I'm going to go over to Zechariah uh, I'll come back there but I want to read Zechariah 12 1 through 9 The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, says the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within, within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about it when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And in that day, says the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open my eyes unto the house of Judah, and will smite every horse and the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts their God. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheaf, and they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that in the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Judah are those that hold the ruling scepter. They will be one in Christ Jesus. Judah are those that come forth first in the spirit, um, prophetically. And in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at, at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek and destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Jerusalem prophetically is a condition of truth. 
Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. And then Genesis 15, verse 18. And then the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Um, Egypt being prophetically of the perverse spirit and the great river Euphrates, which is the border between Israel and Babylon. Prophetically is when the supernatural realm will be opened up, when the four winds are released. That will open up the boundary that will bring in the mixing of the seed to resist God's children from taking back their land of inheritance that was stolen from them as they were in their sleep and slumber, that being of Judah uh, and Jerusalem being of truth. When they are ra roused up, that being that old lion, the lion is the, is, is the, was some, um, on the banner um, for the tribe of Judah. Um, and we're going to read of um, Judah rousing in, um, in Genesis um, 49. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I might tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. And this is what will befall Judah in the last days. Judah, thy art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thy art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from um, between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass is colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Uh, Satan will then come, as he did in Genesis 6, and also in Revelation 12, to prevent his government and righteousness from forming by setting up his perverted government that perverts everything that is righteous. And I'm going to read in Genesis 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, daughters being the spiritual side of man, that the sons of God, these being the angelic beings, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They came in and mingled the seed. Uh, put uh, the, for the perverse spirit, turning them back to the flesh uh, over the spirit. And the Lord said, My spirit, as in my Holy Spirit, shall not always strive with man, for, that all, for he is also flesh, because they chose flesh over the spirit, yet his days shall be 120 years. 120 means a divinely appointed time of waiting when God will save 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, that being the 144,000. And then um, prophetically in Revelation 12, starting with verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out onto the earth, and his angels were cast out uh, with him. Uh, when God's children... Uh, choose another Savior over the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that will bring uh, him down. Um, God, that will bring um, his judgments of, on the fourth generation. For being symbolic of God's creation on the fourth day, uh, God completed the material universe. On this day, he brought into existence the sun, the moon, and all the stars, and their purpose was not only to give off light, but also to divide the day from the night, this being a basic demarcation of time, also a type of signal that will mark off days and years and seasons. The Hebrew word for season is moed, which means a divine appointment. Uh, the fourth commandment is to remember God's holy Sabbath. It is tied directly to the creation week. This being when the sixth day man's labor and work will be finished, and all flesh man will have come through the material earth. Uh, it will be time now for the spiritual man to come forth in the spirit. We will be in a different um, dimension, um, the seventh um, dimension of time, which is, which is spirit. 
we are to become one and rest a bone in marriage with Christ. Satan will try to resist this union to keep you in the flesh by setting up his laws and commandments to serve flesh. Uh, that being from verse 12 of Genesis 15. And lo, a horror, as in an idol of dreadful, uh, as in dreadful terror, of great, as in insolent, as in showing rude behavior, arrogancy, lack of respect, insulting in speech or conduct, also noble and proud, dark, and then in darkness, as in wickedness, misery, obscurity, as in the state of being unknown and uh, hidden, uh, fell as to be cast down, to overthrow and divide. Um, and then I'm going to finish up on Genesis 15. Um, and then in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river of the Euphrates, that being the border between Babylon and um, Israel, uh, that being when the supernatural realm is opened up on the earth, and, the, um, and they will come in and mingle the seed. And, the, and, and in 19 uh, through 21 is the, um, the fallen angels that have mixed with, uh, with the, uh, the seed of man, the, um, the Nephinims, the Kenites and the uh, Kenizzites and the, and the and, and Cadmonites and the Hittites and the, and the Perizzites and the Rephim, Rephim um, and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. Um, and then I'm going to go over um, to Daniel uh, chapter 2, um, verse 31. Thou, thou, O king, saw us, and behold, a great image. Uh, as in an adulterous figure, uh, a form, an image, uh, this, this form as, as in um, the visible shape in which a thing exists or appears, a manifestation bringing together parts as to create something, to make or fashion uh, into a certain shape of form. Um, as in um, large in size and quantity and number. Um, this image uh, formed um, when the star Wormwood fell that brought the bitterness. And we'll read of that in Revelation 8, starting with verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. It's not the lamp, but it burns as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Uh, wormwood means bitterness, but it also means a calamity. A, a calamity is an event causing often in great sudden disaster, distress, destruction. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. That sudden event, a calamity, um, that brought the great and sudden disaster, distress, destruction, is the coronavirus. Uh, corona meaning crown, crown being a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of authority. And then back to um, uh, chapter 2, verse 31. Thou art king, sawest, and behold a great image. Uh, that, um, and um, this image whose brightness uh, was excellent, excellent, excellent as in preeminent, as in being more important or powerful uh, than they actually possess. Um, presenting themselves as being more important or powerful than they actually exist. Um, and then um, stood uh, as to establish, set up, um, before thee, as in, the, uh, as in the king of Babylon, that set it up, and the form uh, as an as aspect, as in a particular part or feature of something, of the positioning of a, of a building or a thing in a specified direction, also a particular particular status or phase in which something appears or may be regarded um, 
and the form thereof was terrible um, as, to, um, as, as to be formidable, as to inspire or re um, reject through by um, impressively large, powerful, intense, uh, capable being um, difficult to deal with uh, when uh, it, uh, if you oppose it. And then 33. Well, the, 32, this image's head was of fine gold and, and his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, and his legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. Um, this being um, the progression of the image with his feet being part of iron and part of clay. Iron is formed by uh, falling stars, uh, meteorites. This being from Genesis 15, um, verses 18 through 19. This is when the Euphrates is opened up, the supernatural realm is open, that will bring in the falling angels, that will mix the seed line of the earthly with the supernatural, as in Genesis 6, to prevent the spiritual man from coming forth. This mixing will bring this uh, image down. Uh, Daniel 2:43. Uh, and whereas thy sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Um, the minerals uh, will start, um, start off strong, as in the head of gold, but will get weaker when they try to mix. Then God will bring them down. The gold being from Daniel 3, this being when this law was set up, that brought about the obedience to the law that was set up. This law uh, was uh, set up uh, when the star wormwood fell that brought that bitterness. And then we're going to go to Daniel 3.1. Nechemeneser the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits, and he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Dura means dwelling, this being um, Babylon. 60 cubits combined breadth of 6 cubits is 666, this being the first beast of Revelation 13 that rose up out of the sea. Um, um, being the people's multitude, the sea being the people's multitudes and nations and tongues that will help establish it by believing in their lies. Um, 6 being the number for the weakness of man that that being the, the flesh man rising up, the flesh, the flesh man savior the, over the spiritual, um, you, what you um, can't see. The spiritual is what you can't see but believe as your savior, uh, the savior of the inner man, not the outward man. Uh, six being the number they want you to stand. Uh, stand means to establish, rise, set up. They want you to stand six feet apart. Um, Observe this six-day man over the seventh-day man. God's children will be born out of Babel, Zerubbabel. And then um, chapter 3, 2. Then Nechemeneser the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges and treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the princes to come to the dedication of the image which Nechemeneser the king had set up. Uh, dedication means a consecration to uh, the worship of a deity. And, and set up as to a, um, a point, raise up, establish in laws, this um, being your savior, uh, those two crowns. If you just do what we say, listen to the laws that we have set up, you will be saved from your fleshly death. God's children are not to fear death because our savior Jesus Christ defeated death. That is the devil. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he all... He also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, and that is the devil. We are not to put any other Savior over Jesus Christ. That will bring down his judgments upon the fourth generation. Thy shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any thing, that being um, that, um, that representation of that external form of a person or thing in art. Uh, the general impression that a person, an organization, or a product presents to the public. That being the coronavirus symbol that they have set up their laws by. Corona meaning crown. 
a crown being a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of um, authority, this um, monarch um, being the king of Babylon. Um, Babel, Babylon as in confusion. If anything that is in heaven above or any that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, thy shall not bow thou down thyself to them nor serve them. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. No servant can serve two masters, for he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. Uh, mammon meaning confidence. That is wealth personified meaning to represent a quality or concept by a figure of a human form, an attribute, a personal nature, or human characteristics to something non-human, to represent or embody in a physical form, incarnated into a real person. This person is incarnated uh, when a spirit embodied into a flesh form is, a, into a flesh form is of gold. He will be known for gold, the liking of gold, gold surrounding him. And um, back to Daniel 2, verse 34. And thy sawest till that stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Thy sawest till that a stone was cut out uh, uh, as to quarry, uh, also means from H6458, uh, an idol uh, was cut out without hands. This image, idol, meaning a person or thing that is greatly loved or, or reverenced uh, without hands, as in man's power to be elevated, but, um, but um, without hands, as in ma man's power to be elevated, but God's power, as was with Joseph. Um, and I'm going to read of Joseph's elevation. I'll come back there. Um, but I'm going to read of him in Genesis 41, uh, 37 through 43. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one? as this is a man in whom the spirit of god is and jo pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has showed thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art thy shall be over my house and according to unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in a vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Uh, Joseph prophetically, um, Joseph meaning the increaser, may he add, will be ruler over the perverse spirit of Egypt. Uh, for the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man uh, staggereth in his vomit. In Genesis um, 50, um, verse 26, So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him. Embalm means to preserve. He is preserved for the, for the end days. And he, and, and, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. That being he, that flesh body was put in a coffin in Egypt. But his, he was embalmed as preserved. And I'm going to read of him of uh, the last days of what is, to, is of um, Joseph. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. He will be that stone of Israel. 
even by the God of thy father who shall help thee and by the almighty who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above the blessings of the deep that lieth under the blessings of the breast and of the womb the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren <coughs> And in verse 25 of 50, And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from thence, bones being the strength of the body. We are to be in the hand of the potter that formed us um, in, the, uh, in the spiritual man uh, made from those um, broken pieces. For... Um, for now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art our potter, and we are all the work of thy hands, that being that stone that will be cut out without hands. Um, but God's power, um, we will come forth. Through God's power, we will come forth. This being the, uh, the new man. Um, in Genesis 2, verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, that being um, the, the dry bones. Um, they will turn to dust, uh, um, being the bones are being are the strength of the inner body that will that will that will stand you up. The skeletal framework, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This is what Satan is trying to prevent. He being the prince of the air of the flesh, man, he is resisting the spiritual man. Um, by having them to cover their mouths with the mask, the veil, the molten God, he being the prince of the air, having that power, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that being the perverse spirit, um, resisting of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to um, read in... Um, Ezekiel 37 of those bones starting with verse 1 and the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry when bones are dry and brittle they will become they can become dust and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered O lord god thy knowest and again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and they and say unto them O you dry bones hear the word of the lord and thus say the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones to get, came together bone to his bone. Remember, Joseph uh, was they were to bring his bones out of Egypt and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them and and then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus say the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these slain and they may live um, the first two and a half months of the five months will be the Elijah ministry that will um, prepare you for the second two and a half months. That is when um, the, the uh, four winds will be released. That will open up the, the spiritual realm. Yahweh will enter into the vessel he chooses to speak through, which will be the two witnesses. And then the two witnesses will present Yahweh to the elect, and then the elect will present Yahweh to the 144,000. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood up upon their feet in exceedingly great army. And then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. 
Therefore prophesy that being bone upon his bone, and therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus say the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. Meaning he will rule as God. Your, front, uh, your fleshly prisons will be open, and the spiritual man will come forth. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves and my people and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land and then shall you know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it says the Lord the word of the Lord came again unto me saying moreover the son of man take the um, I'm going to end it there and I want to go over to um, Ezekiel um, 13 and read of um, how he's covering the breath and what God feels about it. Uh, like um, Ezekiel 13, verse 17, Likewise thy son of man set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy against them, and say, Thus say the Lord God, Woe to the women that sow pillows as a covering, to all armholes as in power, and make kerchiefs as a veil upon the head of every statue to hunt souls will you hunt the souls of my people and will you save the souls alive that come unto you and will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies wherefore thus say the lord god behold i'm against your pillows uh, as a, a covering wherewith you were you there hunt the souls to make them fly and I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go even the souls that you hunt to make them fly your kerchiefs as a veil will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall no more be in your hand to be hunted and you shall know that I am the Lord because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad whom I have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life Therefore you shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. That veil, that covering, that molten God. Molten means a covering, a veil. He is angry about it. Um, then I'm going to go back to um, Daniel 2, verse uh, 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like a chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Uh, that wind being the Holy Spirit that will uh, stand against the perverse spirit. Uh, and that stone uh, becoming a great mountain, that being a nation this nation on um, Judah that would be established in God we trust that is what will make a, uh, America great again not a man of gold uh, 37 36 this is a dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king thou o king art a king of kings for the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom power and strength and glory it is God who will give him this power, and he will take back that power as soon as the negative part of God's plan is finished. 38. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven has he given into thy hand, and have made thee a ruler over them all. Thy aren't this head of gold. Um, this being the children of men dwell. We stand for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of heaven of the celestial not of the earth as in lucifer that has been cast down to the earth they tempted jesus saying master we know that thy art true and teachest the way of god in truth neither uh, carest thou for any man for thy regard is not the person of men god's children will stand for the god of heaven when all others are bowing to the image man has set up to replace him 39 and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall rule over the, all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. 
this being that fourth kingdom, as in the fourth generation, uh, iron being of the supernatural realm. For this says the, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all those these nations, that they may serve Nechemenes, or the king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beast of the field also. This will be the last part of the two and a half months of the five months, the Lord's day. The first two and a half months, he will be behind the scenes working with the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, be in the sea that, that he will rise up out of. These, um, well, um, they are who will establish him, um, set him up that being that image that was uh, set up when the star wormwood fell and the second part of the two and a half months being when the supernatural realm the boundary will be lifted that will bring in the supernatural that is when Yahweh will inhabit the vessel he chooses to speak through um, um, that's when he comes in supernaturally is in Revelation 19 and I'll read of that Uh, starting with verse 11 and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he does judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it it shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Um, and Satan will inhabit um, the vessel um, uh, that will resist him, and that will be Revelation uh, 12. Uh, starting with verse 7 and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought with his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out onto the earth and his angels were cast out with him um, that this will be the second phase um, of the dragon of Revelation 13. The first phase phase is when he sets up his laws over the people, his power and authority as their savior. They are all in one accord to this dragon. And the second phase is when he comes in as the lamb with the two horns and he spake as a dragon because they are one entity, um, it, uh, it, but two roles. It will appear that it, that it will have received a deadly wound because there will be uh, a time of reprieve um, from its authoritative powers over the people. God has given this time of freedom to, so we can look to him as a savior. Uh, listen to his authority. Um, uh, he sets man free. They don't, they don't even realize they are in bond, bondage of serving man over God. Uh, who sets man, man free, wanting to free you from your fleshly prison. And I'm going to read um, in John 8. He just wants you to reflect and use your brain to, you know, he wants you to, um, to see that what's going on, but they aren't seeing. Um, they're wearing these masks proudly. They're doing everything that... Um, man is telling them to save their fleshly um, to save to save their flesh um, it's John 8 23 and he said unto them you are from beneath I am from above you are of this world I am not of this world I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins for if you believe not that I am he you shall die in your sins I being the spirit of Yahweh, M being the host. He is Lord of the host. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said un, uh, unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but that um, sent me, that he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him that be in that spirit 
they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father had taught me, I speak these things, and he that sent me is with me. The Father have not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And he spake these words, and many believed on him. And then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, These being those that are of Judah, uh, that are one in Christ, these believed on him, that being Yahweh. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That truth is what's going to make you free. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. They, they say that they aren't serving um, they aren't in bondage to man, serving man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commit a sin is the servant of sin. If you commit sin, you are of the flesh, and you will be the servant of the flesh. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If he is in one with you, um, you will be eternal you will not die you are not to worry about your death if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed he is the one that will set you free i know that you are abraham's seed but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you i speak that which i have seen with my father and you do that which you have seen with your father they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus says unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Abraham was known by his faith. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not um, Abraham. They want to kill that spirit that was with, that is within him. They are soul murderers. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication, that being that harlot woman. We have one father, even God. Uh, they claim to be one father, as in Judah, one, those that are one, um, one in Christ Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, if, if God were your father, you wouldn't love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. If you are not in the spirit, you will not be able to understand um, the spirit. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Liberty means the state of being free within a society from an oppressive restrictions imposed by an authority on one way, one's ways of life, a behavior, or their political views. A freedom to do as desired. Patrick Henry's last words to his audience before the American Revolution is this. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, liberty, give me liberty or give me death. You must be willing to face death. When they use death to get you to bow to their slavery, we are to stand and face death head on, as Daniel did. When the second phase of the dragon comes forth to cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, this being that same dragon, um, this will be uh, the iron phase of Daniel 2, verse 40, the fourth kingdom as strong as iron, coming in supernaturally, that being when Satan will inhabit the vessel he chooses to speak through, that being that man that symbolizes, that, um, that is symbolic of that gold, for it is a number of a man, and his number is 600, uh, uh, three score and six. 600 being um, the head of the spear of Goliath that weighed 600 shekels of iron. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and uh, one bearing a shield went before him. Then said David to the Philistine, 
Thy camp cometh to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thy hast defied. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, um, for the the battle is of the is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. Um, three score is sixty. There are sixty verses in Acts seven. Acts seven is when Stephen exposes those that resist the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to read Acts seven. Stephen was killed for this, but he stood up and spoke anyway. He did not, he did not fear death, just like we are not to. We are to stand head on. Starting in verse 1, Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I will show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charan, and from thence when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on the wise, that his, his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of the circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the, and the patriarchs moved with envy and they sold Joseph unto Egypt, into Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh the king of Egypt and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house and there came a dearth all, over all the land of Egypt and 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 Chanan and gate in great affliction and our fathers found no sustenance and when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt he sent out our fathers first and at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Um, this the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, Joseph meaning may he add the increaser, who was embalmed. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all of his kindred, and threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into uh, Sychem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham brought, um, bought for a sum of money, and the sons of Emor, the father of uh, Sychem. And when the time of the prophets drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children uh, to the end that they might not live. In what time Moses was born, and was exceedingly fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months, and when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brother and the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptians. For he supposed his brethren should have would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren. Why do you wrong one to another? But he did that did but he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee ruler and a judge over us? Will thy kill me as thy didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, and where he begot two sons. 
And when 40 years were expired, they appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. And when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to it, to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not to behold. Then said the Lord of him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet. The place wherein thy standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and I am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. And this Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. And he brought them out after that. He showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, and of your brethren like unto me, him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, that being Elijah, um, that, that uh, cries out in the wilderness, turning your hearts to the fathers, um, your spiritual father or your heavenly father, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, which with, with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt saying unto Aaron make us gods to go before us for as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt we want um, not what is become of him and they made a calf in those days and they offered sacrifices unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their hand own hands then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it's written in the book of the prophets so you house of Israel have you offered me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the desert. Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Rampham, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you out beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, uh, as he appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers into the days of David who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob but Solomon built him a house how about the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as says the prophet heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool what house will you build me says the Lord or what is the place of my rest has not my hand made all these things you stiff neck and uncircumcised in the heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now in the, in the betrayers and the murderers, who have received the law by the disposition uh, of angels and have not kept it. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly in heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and they stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice Lord lay not this sin to their charge and when he had seen this uh, he uh, fell asleep um, let me see and, and that was 60 verses in the Acts of chapter 7 exposing um, those that resist the Holy Spirit and and then six being the number they are to have you stand uh, six feet apart uh, by the authority of their laws um, they have set up to serve um, that being the six-day man um, the weakness of man uh, that came when that star uh, wormwood fell that brought the bitterness that brought the crown that crown of, um, of authority um, 
that being a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of authority. Uh, who will you serve? Who will you choose as your savior, your king? And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long how you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if he be Baal, then follow him. This is when faith will be tested. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the, uh, the, uh, the evidence of things not seen. This is a spiritual war for your soul. He is using trickery to have you serve him as your savior. Um, we are uh, warned of his subtility, as in the quality of being subtle, hard to notice, cunning, meaning showing skill in, a, in achieving one's ends by deceit, evasion as being indirect, and in craftiness as a clever at achieving one's aims um, by indirect or deceitful methods. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the uh, means of these miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Uh, we are to get ready. The second phase is coming. We are to have his shield of protection on at this time, his armor. The shield of armor is your faith. That is what you will not, you will, um, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That being that spear, that sixty shekels, um, that Goliath held. Uh, I'm going to go over to Job uh, 40, um, 41, starting with verse one. Canest thy draw out the phiathin with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canest thy put a hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thy take him for a servant forever? Will thy play with him as with a bird? Or will thy bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part? Uh, him among the merchants? Canest thy fill his skin with bar barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who has prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine I will not who has prevented me that I should repay him Satan it will come to try to resist him I will not conceal his parts nor his power nor his calmly uh, pro, uh, portion uh, conceal his parts um, as to bring um, as to brag um, this is one that is boastful, also means a liar. Uh, his um, matter as a word spoken, uh, a commandment. And calmly, this being um, the beauty that you look upon, this is outwardly, not inwardly. Lucifer in Ezekiel 28 was perfect in beauty. He will inhabit a vessel that will still exalt self. Um, a portion as to estimate things. That one, um, that one set in order, uh, taxation as to numerate, uh, number. We are to know him by his number. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. Uh, his teeth are the cheek teeth of a great lion. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. Uh, pride as um, being a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. Um, consciousness of one's dignity. For thy is set in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Um, Um, his scales or his pride shut up together as with a uh, closed seal. 
One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his nessings, a light does shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. By his nessings, nessings means to sneeze. That is uh, when you clear your nose from foreign matter, as in, as in smoke, um, that has entered it. It is a way to protect the body, that being uh, that foreign air, uh, that being the prince of the air, his poisonous air. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as in the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and, and the air uh, were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. His nestings as in sneezing, refusing to breathe in that poisonous air. When you uh, trap in your own air, you will poison your own self. This is called hypercarbia. That is when you breathe in carbon dioxide instead of um, breathing in fresh air and um, breathing out carbon dioxide. If you continue to breathe in your own carbon dioxide, you will kill yourself. It will change the pH balance of your blood to an acid that will eventually cause your kidneys to overwork that will lead to a slow death. Uh, light is in uh, spiritual illumination, spiritual intellect that will rise up out of this darkness. The eyelids um, as of the morning, eyelids um, uh, meaning morning uh, ray, a dawning. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bride and the morning star. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go a smoke, and out of a, a, out of a seething pot are cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth, this being the flame of the Holy Spirit. And in his neck remaineth strength, uh, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is firm as a stone. Yea, as hard as a piece of the of, um, nether um, millstone. Um, when he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold the spear, the dart, nor the harbor again. He esteemed iron as a straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. He beholdeth all high things. That are, um, uh, that are, um, he, it is, he that, um, that beholdeth that is high above the people. As a, um, he is looking, um, beholding it. He has an eye on it. Uh, at, he is uh, above the people as a savior of the people. Uh, he is that king over all the children of pride. You must humble yourselves before the Lord. We are to bow before him. There will be two spirits within the, the vessel that will that will hold Lucifer, who will lift him out, himself up um, um, pride uh, with pride uh, over the perverse people, having them serve him in, as in trickery. Uh, his crown of authority of the six-day man, the power he has over the flesh man, all those that dwell on the earth as an earthly. And then we will have the vessel that will hold Yahweh, who will be lowly, humble, meek. Uh, there will be the two yokes that will pull you into two different um, directions. Um, uh, also, um, as an opinions, as to be divided in mind, a sentiment, as a view or attitude towards a situation or an event. 
And Elijah came unto all the people. Elijah is a prophet that will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And said, How long have ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if he be Baal, then follow him. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You are to let go of your earthly knowledge of the six-day man. The, the flesh man is limited in knowledge. And learn of me, the celestial knowledge, um, the spiritual enlightenment. For I am, that is I, and um, as in the spirit of Yahweh, and am the vessel that will hold Yahweh, um, the Lord of hosts, meek as in gentle, humble as in lowly, as in humiliated, cast down, humbled, of low degree, realizing their low degree of the flesh man to stand before Yahweh uh, in heart, and you shall rest unto your souls. For what profit of, uh, of a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Two opinions. You will make your choice. A wise man chooses wisely. Let no man deceive uh, himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in, in this world, let him become a fool that he might be wise. And we're going to end this today, elect. You have a great day until the morning.